In the frequentist interpretation of probability, we worked through an example in which a pollster collected a bunch of customer satisfaction and dissatisfaction data over time from a customer base at a car dealership. The results of these surveys were summarized in a ta table like the one that you're viewing right now. It would be worth reproducing this example using technological tools such as a TI calculator or MATLAB and that's what the subject of this video is going to be. We'll begin by entering the data in this table into the TI calculator and then visualizing it using a, uh, a line graph. We'll begin by entering the data that the pollster collected on customers' dissatisfaction and satisfaction at the dealership over the different years into the calculator's internal memory registers. Calculator has a built-in spreadsheet, in a sense, and we'll just copy most of the data uh, from the um, um, pollster's records into the columns of the calculator spreadsheet. So to do that, We'll click on the Stat button, select Edit, and that should bring us to a screen that looks like a spreadsheet. Now, mine's empty. If yours isn't, you could have gone and clicked on Stat, Clear List, whoops, Stat Edit, Clear List, and then selected, for instance, L1 in this case, or L2 or L3 or L4, or any of the other columns that has data in it that you would like to get rid of. And that would have emptied that out for you. But as I said, mine was clear already, um, so I'm just going to go back in and start entering data. So the first column is going to be the survey size, and I'll just start entering in values. So 12, 28, 52, 112, 248, 502, 1106, 2400, and 5008. Now the actual data that the pollster collected represented the number of dissatisfied customers within a given survey. And that's going to form the next column. This would have been the variable R in the example. So those were 3, then 4, then 10, then 21, then 43, then 83 and 195, 431, and 970. Now, the table in the example had three other columns. These were the number of satisfied customers, and then the two relative frequencies for dissatisfied and satisfied customers. But all of those can be calculated from the data that we've entered into the calculator already. So we might as well do that rather than trying to re-enter those values um, by hand. So if I wanted to put the number of satisfied customers into the next column, well, that's just going to be the difference between the total sample size, the total survey size, and the number of dissatisfied customers. Everybody else in this simplistic view is, is satisfied. So I really just want to take the L1 column and subtract the L2 column from it and store the result in L3. And the way I can do that is that I scroll up to the header of the L3 column, and it tells me L3 equals down here, and I'm just going to type in that formula. L3 equals second 1 to get L1, or the survey size, minus second L2. I'm going to hit enter and it populates those values correctly. And so this should reproduce the third column that appeared in the table in our example. 
Likewise, for the relative frequencies, if I wanted to calculate the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers within each of the surveys, that's just going to be R over N. In other words, L2 over L1. So I will do the same thing. I'll go to the column header for L4 and calculate L2 divided by L1. Hit enter, and then that gives me the relative frequencies for dissatisfied customers. And then finally, I'll do the same thing for satisfied customers. That's going to be L3 over L1, and I want to store that in my fifth column. So this is going to be equal to L3 divided by L1. There we go. We've reproduced the table from our example. You might recall from the customer satisfaction survey example that the pollster summarized his data in a graph that looked very much like this one. In this graph, what we're seeing is a plot of the relative frequency of dissatisfied com customers versus the survey size or the focus group size. That's the blue trace and then a graph of the relative frequency of the satisfied customers versus the focus group or survey size. That's the orange trace. Our next goal is going to be to use the calculator to reproduce a graph that's very similar to this one. Well, next we'll reproduce the visualization, the graph of our data that the pollster created in our example. In other words, we're going to create a graph that has a trace of the relative frequencies of dissatisfied customers as a function of survey size and a trace of the relative frequency of satisfied customers as a function of, of n or the survey size. So the way to do that is to first make sure that we've correctly entered our data into our table. We can go back and verify that that's still there by clicking on stat edit and seeing that our five column data table is still in memory and that's important. Okay, so I'm going to quit out of that by hitting second mode to go to the main input screen and then I'm going to start working on um, a, a stat plot. So I'm going to click second y equals to access the stat plot menu and then I'm going to start turning on a couple of plots. Now, all of the plots are off at the moment uh, in, in this particular calculator. I'm going to want to turn on plots one and two. So I'm going to select plot one, turn it on. And I'm going to scroll down and for the type, I'm going to want to either take this scatter plot that's currently blinking or a line graph. Either one is fine. It'll, it'll connect our, our, our data points. I'm going to just use um, a line graph. And then I've got to choose the data that I'm going to plot. Oops, I didn't actually choose that line graph, so I've chosen it. I'm going to choose the data that I actually want to plot. So the X list is going to be the independent variable, the horizontal axis. That's the variable that we're plotting our relative frequencies against. And so this should be L1, um, which it currently is set to be, uh, or the, the, the actual um, survey size. If it didn't say L1 here, then we would just type second one to get L1. Now the Y list by default is set to L2 and in this case that's correct as well because uh, actually it's not correct because what I'm wanting to do is plot the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers. L2 contains the absolute frequency or the total head counts of dissatisfied customers in each of the surveys. So I'm going to want to change that to L4 by clicking on second um, I'm going to leave the mark the way it is 
and your calculator might or might not have a color function. I'm going to leave mine as blue uh, just, just because. Now from this screen I can move on to one of the other plots. I'm going to select plot 2 and that is currently off. I want to turn it on and I'm going to choose a line plot again instead of a scatter plot. And this time I'm wanting to plot the relative frequencies of satisfied customers versus the, the, uh, the, the, the survey size. So L1, the survey size, is still correct for X list. Y list should be L5 because the L5 column is the one that contains the relative frequencies of our satisfied customers. So I'm going to change that, second, five. I'll leave the mark as a square, and I'm going to leave the color, because I can, as red. You know, the main thing is just to make the two traces a different color. So I've set up the two plots that I want to display. Now I'm going to go and um, I'm just going to go straight and uh, click on trace. There's nothing there, so I'm going to go back to window and see why not. Part of the problem is the range that we're, we're looking at by defaults. I don't really need to plot from negative 10 to 10 because none of my x values run in that range. I should be going from, say, 0, representing smallest possible for um, survey size up to something bigger than the largest survey that I conducted which was 5,008 people. So I might as well just go ahead and choose x max to be 5010. 5,010 is just a little bigger than 5,008. Um, likewise no reason to be looking at negative values for y because all of our relative frequencies fall between 0 and 1. So our minimum value for y is going to be 0. Our maximum value is going to be 1. So we'll just change that to 1. 1. There we go. And let's see how that goes. Now we can see our graphs. So I've clicked on trace. I can zoom back and forth and see the different values in the plot, but we've effectively reproduced the graphs that appeared in our example just by using the TI calculator. So the blue graph is the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers and the red graph is the relative frequency of satisfied customers. We're able to reproduce the customer satisfaction survey example in MATLAB just as well as we were on the TI calculator. We're going to follow essentially the same strategy, we just use slightly different tools. Our first step, once again, is to bring the pollster's data into MATLAB's memory itself. and there's, there's while there's many ways to do that, we're just going to do it um, directly here. I'm creating two variables, one called sample size and one called dissatisfied. And these represent the um, survey sizes and then the number of dissatisfied customers that appeared in each of the surveys. Both of these variables are going to contain column vectors, just like what we'd represent in a spreadsheet uh, of the numerical values from the pollster's data. And then I calculated a third variable called satisfied that rather than entering in the numerical values by hand, um, we, we just recognize that the satisfied customers equal the sample size minus the dissatisfied customers. So if I were to step through each of those. We see down here in MATLAB's workspace, data has been created in MATLAB's memory for those three var variables. 
And we've got two other variables that we wanted to create. These were the relative frequencies of dissatisfied customers and satisfied customers. And they were computed in the calculator and in reality, the same way we're going to compute them here. We take the total number of dissatisfied customers and divide them by the sample size in order to get the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers. And then we do the same thing for satisfied customers. Satisfied divided by sample size gives us the relative frequency of satisfied customers. The one thing to keep in mind here for both of these computations is that we are dividing a vector of data by another vector of data. And we mean to do this in a component-wise or term-wise sense. So what I'm trying to do is create a new vector whose first entry is equal to the quotient of the first entries of the dissatisfied and sample size vectors. Second entry will be the quotient of the second entries. Third entry will be the quotient of the third entries, and so on. The dot divide operator in MATLAB is how you accomplish that. If we try to just divide, it would likely throw an error. So if I step through these values, you can see down here in the workspace that the data has been created and stored. So now I'd like to be able to visualize it in a way that's easy to interpret rather than just having raw arrays to look at in MATLAB. So we're going to create a, a table and the table is going to have columns made up in the same order as what we saw in our example. The first column will be the sample size, the second si column will be the absolute frequency of dissatisfied customers, third will be the absolute frequency of satisfied customers, relative dis frequency of dissatisfied customers will be the fourth column, and then the final column will be the relative frequency of satisfied customers. If I run that, that table actually gets created and is visible over here in our output area. And we can scroll back and forth to see that we've got the same values that we entered into the calculator and the same values that appeared in the table in the example. So we should see something very similar to what already appeared in the example, table headings and all. So now it's time to visualize that data that we've brought in into a usable format in MATLAB. So I would like to create a plot that, let's get that tool tip out of the way, I'd like to create a plot that's going to be the same one that we've been seeing. It's going to have one trace that has the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers plotted against the, the um, survey size, and another trace of the relative frequency of satisfied customers plotted, uh, yeah, satisfied customers plotted against the, um, the survey size. And so MATLAB's plot function works in pairs, and I am accessing as an independent variable survey.sampleSize. That's this column of our survey table, our survey data table. And then plotted against that will be survey.relative dissatisfied, the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers occurring in the fourth column. Then survey.sample size again, the first column, and plotted against that is survey.relative uh, relative satisfied, the relative frequency of satisfied customers found in the fifth column. So if I run that, it will create a plot, but then I'd like to format that plot so that it has a legend and some labels on the x and y axes and a title. And that's what these remaining commands do. I specify a title, and quotes with the title command, a label for the x-axis, a label for the y-axis, and a legend that's going to tell me that the blue trace represents the relative frequency of dissatisfied customers, and the orange trace represents the relative frequency of satisfied customers. So if I step through those commands, we should see that the graph starts to take shape with its labels, and then finally its legend. And this is the visualization that appeared in the text and in the example on the customer service or customer satisfaction 
uh, survey that the pollster conducted. And in fact, we can look at our graph, and it looks just like the graph in the calculator, in that these traces seem to be leveling off where they should be, right around 0.19 for the relative frequency of um, dissatisfied customers, and right around 0.81 for the relative frequency of satisfied customers. That brings us to the end of this technological companion to the frequentist interpretation of probability. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. As always, you'll be able to find a link in the description that'll bring you to MATLAB Live scripts that were used during this technological companion so that you may modify them and experiment with them on your own.